What's going on guys? So today, um, down here in the shop and I got a buddy of mine that's got a 2011 Dodge Ram truck. Um, had a fuel pump relay fault in it and they have done the relay bypass here as a temporary fix to basically jump the circuit. Uh, but the problem is, is as soon as you turn the key on, the fuel pump runs continuously uh, with this changeover like this. So what we're actually going to do today is I'm going to take this apart and the relay is made into the TIPM module, uh, which is underneath all of this. So we've got to pull this power distribution center out and uh, that's what I'm going to get started on and do right now because first thing I'm going to do is disconnect the battery because uh, we are working with the power distribution center basically in the uh, unit itself. So we got it loose. I'm gonna take the cable loose over here. And once we get it loose, we'll snap the entire housing out. Uh, and it's actually not that bad to get out, to be honest with you. Uh, we'll close that back. We got some tabs here on the side that we'll push in. Uh, there's actually four of them on this truck. Uh, this is gonna be true for jeeps um some of your other vehicles and stuff uh as far as chrysler products i know ford uses something similar and we'll take this loose push it off to the side again we got the battery disconnected so we're not worried about it touching anything now when we flip this over back here on the back side each one of these connectors is color coded um, we're gonna push this little red lock up on each one of these like that and then we can flip this up and it actually unplugs it and you'll see this one's green and there's green on the bottom of the power distribution center here we'll take this blue one loose sometimes they're a little finicky don't force it um, because if you do it will end up breaking something and you don't want to break anything in this harness so this one's blue. It's marked blue back here on the back. Uh, these on the side here don't appear to have any type of lock other than you just press in and then pull down on them. And they'll come unplugged. Now each one of these I'm doing one at a time here. Uh, this one's got a different style slide on it. It slides back and then you press down on the release tab and it comes loose. All right. Now we've almost got the whole thing out here. There we go. There's that one. And there's that one. So like I said, guys, each one of these is color coded. This brown one's brown. Uh, this greenish gray color right here. Um, we've got our blue. We've got our other connectors and stuff. And this is the TIPM module. Now, what I'm gonna do is take this over to the bench and we have got to get into this section right here, uh, which is where the relays are soldered to the board. So I'm gonna move everything over to the workbench and we'll get started. Now we're over here on the workbench and one of the key things I've done is when I had this open, is I took a picture of this. So I know where every fuse is at, where every relay goes, stuff as far as that goes. Um, and that's important because you'll just about have to disassemble this entire thing in order to get into here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna pull all the fuses and stuff out of it, lay them out on the table, and get ready to disassemble this box. All right, so we've got all the relays out. These just pop up, and once they're popped up, we're good to go. Now, all the way around it is these little black clips. These things are a pain in the butt. You have to be real delicate with them so you don't break them. But once you get all those loose, you can actually come in here and push this upper housing down just a little bit and it comes off. 
So there is our upper housing. And that exposes all of our contact points for our relays and everything like that. Now we flip this over and there's two tabs in here that have to be depressed in order to slide this housing off. So what we want to do is just be gentle with it and work our way up until we get it to actually pull loose completely. Now, don't go pushing and prying on circuit boards. You'll break them. This right here, we just got to do real delicately. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on it here and there um, to try to get it to slide loose. If anything, I'll get in here with a screwdriver and I'll pry on the plastic housing here just a little bit in these corners. That kind of releases it, frees it up, and it slides out. Now, we are into the internal workings of the TIPM now. What we're looking for is uh, not this little bug right here. <laughs> I don't think he made it. But what we're looking for is this relay right here. This is the fuel pump relay. Uh, according to most of the schematics and everything that I found online, this is the relay that we're looking for. Um, this board is supposed to come off from here. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of finesse and a little bit of work, but we should be able to slide it up off from here. Now, I am trying to be as gentle as I possibly can, and I'm not really putting any pressure. I mean, it's just two fingers that I'm using right here along the edges just to kind of help separate this. Um, you'll see that it's starting to come apart. Again, this is electrical stuff, so you just got to be delicate with it. Take your time, don't get in a big hurry, um, and don't go snatching stuff apart trying to, you know, rip things loose because it's not going to come apart that way. It's just not. Um, you just have to take your time and be real gentle with it. Don't break anything. Don't tear up the board. We're just going to keep working it nice and easy. Just like that. And now we've got it loose. So what we're looking for is this relay right here. And these are our terminal points right here. We've got one, two, three, four, five points that'll have to be unsoldered, and then we'll have to solder the new relay in. All right, so here's our new relay that I got. Bought this off of Amazon. I'll drop a link down in the description below. $9.50 for this relay. Um, I think he was quoted three, $400 for this module. But there is our little bitty relay. Um, this thing is like a little micro relay. Super small, small pins on it. It's gonna be delicate to unsolder it and solder it back in, but we should be able to do it without too much trouble. All right, I've got you pulled in here close now. Again, we're just gonna heat these up to try to pull the pins loose from the board itself. That one's loose. So it took some work <laughs> believe me it took some work but i finally got all the holes are cleaned out now and they are ready to be have this new relay soldered back in so what we have to do is put this relay in from underneath here make sure all our little tabs are sticking through which they are each one of them are you can see them here, 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 and here. Now what we gotta do is we have to support that and we gotta solder that back in, which that'll be easier than unsoldering. Uh, it's usually easier to put a piece in than it is to take a piece out. But electrical is very tedious, especially for me. My hands shake a little. My eyes ain't what they used to be. You 
and get a good flow joint there. Make sure it flows down in there good. Same thing there. Clean my tip good here. And we'll reflow this in. There we go. That one gave me the most trouble out of all of them. It was the hardest one to get cleaned. And it seems to be the most aggravating one to get soldered back. So there's that. Now let me grab my little brush. I've got just a little plastic bristle brush here. Clean this off good. There we go. And I'm gonna take my rag. Got just a little bit of electrical cleaner on it. And wipe this down good. Now, I'm gonna look at my solder joints, make sure they're good. Everything looks to be nice and tight. There we go. Now, I noticed that this pin was loose over here. Um, I don't know if you can see it wiggling, but I noticed that this little pin right here is loose. So while I'm in here, I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. That one's good. Check some of these others here. Just to make sure. Oh, that one right there is a little loose too. better now I'm just gonna run through and check all these just to be on the safe side now we have to reassemble this thing loads of fun here I'm gonna make sure all these line back up and everything goes together nice and smooth is going to be the key thing. Just like that. And there we go. Now that one right there is bent. We're going to straighten it back up. That one's got a little bend to it. All I'm doing is making sure these are straight up and down. They're not bent in. That one was bent over a little bit, probably from where I have been moving it around. So we've got that intact. Now, we've got to slide this housing back together.
I'm not forcing it. I'm just trying to work it nice and easy to make sure that all of these pins come through. And see, it's almost like we're having a little bit of trouble right here on this side. And that makes me worried that we've got one that's bent. So rather than force this, we'll take it back apart. And we'll take a look at it. That tab unlocked. Again, we're gonna come right here in this corner. Twist it down. It's holding on tight up here at the top. I don't see anything that is specifically bent. There's a few of them that look like they might be leaned over just a little bit, but nothing major, major. So we're gonna try this again. that side all right that's it so we have this part back together now. Our next step is to put this back on the top here, which is gonna go just like this. And again, we gotta get all these lined up before we can push it down on there. All right, guys, so now comes the fun part. We've got to put all these fuses and relays back into this control box and then put this back on the truck and we'll see if it starts up without this jumper in it. All right, so here we are. We've got all of our fuses put back in. We don't have the jumper harness in here anymore. Close the lid down on it, and we're going to get this set over in here, and we're going to be ready to put this back together. So I'll start plugging these in one at a time in reverse order of the way I took them apart. Okay, push your safety lock back down. Put this one in. Here we go. That's got everything plugged in. So we'll set this back down in here now. Lock it in. Open this up. We'll attach our power lead coming from our battery. Just like that. Let that tighten back up. Close that up. And we'll reconnect our battery here. So, 
The truck wouldn't start, which didn't surprise me really. Um, because I knew we were gonna have some type of fuel delivery problem or something going on. And what it ended up being is if you look right here, this 20 amp fuse is where this was plugged into. In other words, this was plugged in over here, which is an accessory circuit uh, for either switched or constant on. And then this was plugged in here. So what it was doing is it was bypassing power from over here to this, to this fuse block here. Now, if we look on the fuse block panel, that is M25. And we look right here on M25 and it says 20 amp fuel DSL lift pump. So this is not a diesel, so it's not for the lift pump, it's actually for the fuel pump. So we put that fuse back in, that completed the circuit. And now, if we come over here to the truck, stick our key in, fuel pump cycled, truck fires up and runs. I'll come back out here and I'll show you. There's no jumper in here anymore. So we have eliminated this temporary jumper and put a new relay in this TIPM module and this truck's fixed. So there you go, guys. That is the TIPM fuel pump relay replacement in a 2011 Dodge truck. Now, this will work for many of the Chrysler vehicles. Um, I think VW uses it. I know Ford uses some systems similar to this, but this should apply to Dodge, Chrysler, Jeep, um, any of those. I'll put a link in the description for that relay. Uh, I'll put a link in the description for soldering tool, a little bit of solder and a little solder sucker that I use. Um, you can pick those up off of Amazon really cheap. But guys, I appreciate y'all tuning in. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, drop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, we appreciate you tuning in.